When did you first become aware of television? Uh, what were the first programs you watched? Uh, did you attend the World's Fair back in 1939 when, when TV was exhibited? I did, I, I did attend the World's Fair in 1939, but it was the same thing as the General Motors exhibit. It was just sheer futurist nonsense. You know, uh, you didn't take any of it seriously. And I really don't remember watching any television. Uh, first of all, I couldn't afford a set. And I remember my salary as a teacher was 38 bucks a week. And um, I became aware of it when Yule Brenner called me up one day. He said, Sidney, come on down. Nobody knows what they're doing. You make a nice living here. <laughs> that was it. And what, what was he doing? And where was he? He was directing. Yule was directing. And by the way, uh, parenthetically, a wonderful director. At that time, there, there were no dramas on yet, uh, and Yule was directing the Stork Club, which was a show at the Stork Club, a live show, uh, under that monster, Sh Sherman Billingsley. Uh, the crew loved it because the, uh, he put out a great show. But uh, there was a wonderful guy at CBS, in man in charge, and I, I don't know whether he was director of programming or not. His name was Charlie Underhill. Charlie's idea was that drama was going to be one of the most important staples of the uh, of television nighttime. And he thought, well, we can teach them the technique. Let's get theater people in. He, that was the basic premise that he began. People who know acting, people who know, who dealt with writers, who, uh, who know, ab know about structure. Uh, and it was Charlie's policy to go out and try to get theater people. I think that's, I know he hired Yule, I know he hired Marty Ritt, uh, he hired me, he hired Bobby Mulligan, he hired Johnny Frankenheimer. Um, he was a terrific guy. And that was a deliberate policy on his part. What they did, th th this was really, again, again, I'm sure this was Charlie's wisdom. When you were first hired, you had one week of observation, and then you took over for two weeks. A place called, don't ask me why, Residue. Residue was a room. I'm not sure, I don't remember where it was. I don't think it was on top of Grand Central, where a lot of the CBS studios were. But uh, and it wasn't at 485, which was the radio building. I don't remember. At any rate, residue was the room in which all of the stations of the network were cut in and cut out, were released, were brought in. And you were so that, for instance, at 2920 or 5920, when a program ended, a half-hour program, or an hour program ended, you would cue in the network commercial. There were certain commercials that were on network and certain commercials that were only on local. So you would cue in the uh, network commercial at, as I say, 2920. At 2950, you would release the station cue in your own local commercial, 10-second commercial, cue in the local announcement, oh, by the way, and also cue in the, say, the, uh, the network announcement, and then cue in the reassembly of the network uh, when the clock went straight up. The thing was that you threw in that time, in those 40 seconds, you threw maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 cues. Uh, so that's pretty speedy. And that brought you into the rhythm of what you would need la later in, in live broadcasting. So how, how, for what period of time were you doing that? Two, a week of observation and two weeks of, uh, of working in residue. 
And was that to prepare you to be an assistant director? Yes, to prepare you to be an AD. Your job is an AD. There was a different system at NBC and a different system at CBS. Uh, the way it worked at CBS was the director was responsible for the on-camera camera. Most shows had three cameras. You, as the assistant director, were responsible for the cameras coming up. In other words, uh, we've just cut to camera one. So that means camera two has just been released. I now, over the intercom, tell camera two, OK, you're on a close-up of her, or at the very beginning, uh, get on the chopped liver <laughs> when you'd be doing a cooking show. Uh, close-up of the chopped liver. Uh, ca camera three, ready on close-up of Robert Q. Lewis, or whoever it happened to be. Uh, the director would give the cue for the cutting so that what you'd be responsible for was the upcoming cameras. You'd be that step ahead of the director. The NBC system, the AD didn't have that much to do because the, cam the TD, the technical director, during rehearsal would have the cameraman write down their shots on a list and would just say, ready to, and they'd check off the that shot once they'd finished with it. Uh, in the CBS system, the AD was responsible for that. I'm just curious about your feelings and the feelings of other people coming from the theater about television. I mean, you had spoken earlier, before the Second World War, uh, you and others, at least for a period, looked down upon film. Now, was there similar attitude towards broadcasting? Did you feel you were, you were coming down in the world going into broadcasting or not? I, not I, so? didn't, I didn't feel that. It was so exciting. It was so really crazy. Uh, I mean, Ewell was doing the store club, so uh, he was my rabbi, so I became Ewell's AD. He, uh, I was, right away, his assistant, as soon as I, I could get a show, I was doing, my three shows were Ewell's show of the store club, the UN, CBS would do, there were always cameras at the UN, and the UN, they had to fill the airtime somehow, so they broadcast daily from the UN, I did that which became uh, my first acquaintance with the CBS News Department, which I had, a, and I had a much closer relationship with them later on when you were there. And uh, some, and you'd be shifted around. I did Mama. Ralph Nelson was the director. I was the AD on Mama. I did a show with Ralph Bellamy, a detective show. I can't remember the name of it. And Ralph a wonderful man as well as a brilliant actor. Ralph had hired for the show the first director who had ever used him in Ogunquit, Maine in stock, in a stock company. The poor guy was 84 years old, didn't know where he was, uh, couldn't hear, couldn't see, had no way he could keep up with this. And, uh, and so uh, Ralph gave me and the TD some of his own money, and we did the show between us in terms of camera. Uh, also, by the way, one of the systems then was that you got extra money if you did a commercial, if you did the commercial, because otherwise a new director and a new AD would lean in over you to do the commercial.